Welcome everyone to the Nerd Nook. I'm your host, Evan Teague. With me, like always, is Noah Bailey. I couldn't think of a good pun this week, so we're just rolling with it. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And on the first, well, I consider like the first normal podcast of 2019, we actually will take a look back into some of the stories that we missed over over the break, starting with the topic from the very end of the last podcast of 2018, where we tried to kind of predict how Aquaman, Bone B, and Into the Spider-Verse were going to do both critically and at the box office. So, we're going to start with Aquaman. And you said you actually have seen it, correct? I have seen this, yes. Okay. Not not bad. Not bad. Not bad? Like, I just have, yeah, a, few, I just have a few questions. Because I'm awesome. going to see it this weekend. Um, we might talk more about it next week. Was Jason Momoa like actually fun to watch <laughs> i guess is the best thing to ask i mean Aquaman. It, i think i think if you kind of knew what you were expecting it was fun to watch he kind of is exactly what you would think he would be but mm -hmm. it's not to the point where it's annoying it's kind of if you knew what you were getting into you're fine with it okay all right so he's at he's not worse than he wasn't in, in justice league like no because the my issue going into this movie was he wasn't you know my favorite part of justice league i didn't like his character at all and i wasn't mm -hmm. really looking forward to a whole movie about him so but you're saying it's not that bad no he's not that bad of a character and like it's it kind of tar it targets a different side of him most of the movie anyway so even if the part you didn't like it's still like it's a different it's kind of the same person going through a different experience kind of so it's a different shade of this character okay you know. okay um it, how cool is black manta like okay i am biased because yeah. i i really like black man black man is one of my fit it's that black man is my dc character that like nobody that like really likes that i, I really really like i understand so i'm very biased but i think what i no, but he's i even on bias, like he's a very cool villain. He's a little underused, in my opinion, but I mean, mm. it's understood. But I think Black Manta's, because it's not really his movie, but I think it's a solid character. And that's yeah. not really good. Yeah, like, it's it's it wouldn't be very hard for Black Manta to be the best DC villain at this point, since, you know, they only have, like, one mm -hmm. good one. But I... Just from the trailer, just from what I've seen so far, I could easily see walking out of that movie thinking, he's probably my favorite DC villain so far. I would love, which, like, don't no spoilers, but I'm, I'm assuming he survives. If he does, then if he's in Suicide Squad 2, sure. Like, cause he's, he's been in Suicide Squad right. before, so go for it. Yeah. Or like, right. part of the Legion of Doom, which is yeah, may or may actually happen. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, how how Black Panther -y is it? Because from, the, from that first trailer... It kind of felt Black Panthery with the like the the fight for the throne and mm -hmm. yeah. It, I will say I will say the moments that are kind of like cut and paste from Black Panther in terms of like battling for the throne and stuff like that do feel very deja vu in that perspective. Mm. But a lot of the movie isn't as much about that. So it doesn't feel exact. It doesn't feel like this is like DC trying to make their Black Panther. It doesn't feel like it. Okay. So it's there. Yeah, it just happens to have similar elements because they're both, you know, royalty and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. I think that was all the questions I had. And we'll probably go into a full on review if I do um, get to it by next week. But one last thing Would you agree with the 64% of Rotten Tomatoes that it has? I'd be a little lower, but 64 isn't too far off. Okay, okay. Like, it's, like I initially gave, I, well, well, then again, I initially, I think I said either a six, I said like a six to six and a half. Okay, uh, initially, yeah, right in there. Which for me, so like right in that range, but like, again, but like I think I, I was expecting a lot worse. Yeah. So what I got, I was like, oh, okay. Like I was like, I'm really, like originally I gave it a seven. My rule for movies is when I see it, out of theaters, I take about a point to half a point off mm. just because you just saw it. Yeah. So, yeah, like six, six and a half. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I th I think it's the second highest rated DC movie behind Wonder Woman, 
which I mean, mm-hmm. it's looking like it's the second best DC movie at this point. Which I mean, and again, not hard to make, yeah. not hard to beat the rest of the stuff right. out there. But bar was so high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> the weirdest part about just this entire Aquaman story is that somehow Aquaman became the first DC movie to break one billion dollars. Not Batman versus Superman, not Wonder Woman, not Justice League, Aquaman. Which, like, like those see, trailers were good, and I... Yeah, but they all had good trailers, though. But, like, uh, what was it about this movie in particular? Why did Batman versus Superman not, you know, not do that? Was it because they showed Doomsday at the end? Why did Wonder Woman not... You know, not make it like it's just kind of weird that Aquaman somehow became the first. Like, I'm, I'm all for this movie. You know, doing well because it means DC. You know, might actually get the train back on the track or whatever. But like, mm-hmm. I was not expecting it to do this good <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, here, I, well, uh, so like with Justice League and obviously BBS, like those, I understand why they didn't break the billion mark because I mean those are actually aren't worth it in my opinion wonder woman is i just think that looking back at like when wonder woman came out and stuff i think people just were so like against because dc at that point hadn't put out really a movie worth it yeah so, they had put out three movies that, that were all trash so arguably right, so man I think now was like that, okay but the other two are trash yeah but then that was, and that has been i mean that's 2013 that's like way yeah. back there so like honestly i think after i think that aquaman benefited from really two things i think one was kind of the distance from mm. other like superhero movies because i mean at 2018 the first half of 2018 we've got black panther obviously infinity war we've got you know the summer has been filled with big time movies like you know you had the incredibles too like you had deadpool too like you've had a bunch of movies in the front half in the middle and then 2018 there the end kind of just yeah not yeah, like too much closest, other movies coming out the closest big movie to it was like creed 2 Venom yeah, kind of, and like, like, yeah, it was and just like, kind of there in December you know, by itself, next to yeah, exactly. Like, talked about in a second, of which, yeah. right, yeah, <laughs> and I think I think that really helped it because I think that it was really the movie out at the time, and I think also just like, you know, I think people like superheroes and the fact that there was, you know, no superhero movie for a hot minute. They're like, hey, we need you know a refill, and then like Aquaman, and like, also I do think, that. I don't, I know. I think I mean I think it actually is pretty good. Like it's not mm. like it's a good movie. You don't mm. leave the movie like leaving with all these questions of how does that make any sense? This is terrible. None of this plot holes plot hole. Like it's a, the story's very simple, so it's hard for there to be plot holes. But yeah. I think people are like, okay, A to B, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It has good. And the graphics are cool, there are cool moments, there are some good scenes. So like it works. Okay. Yeah, because like even Wonder Woman I love that movie, but there are like a couple of things here and there that like they could have improved on. But like, yeah. and also, originally I was kind of feeling that um, that uh, Aquaman wouldn't really benefit from being over a year after Justice League, but apparently the distance actually helped it. Which I didn't see that coming. So I mean, good for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, and it's been a while since we've seen a DC movie in terms of like. Not as much in terms of like actual time, but in the amount of other movies we've seen in the gap. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's been, a while. been a lot of Marvel and right. Disney stuff in between there. It's, it was time yeah. for yeah. time for yeah. other DC. Movies. You know, they're gonna make their appearance, make it a decent or good one, mm-hmm. go back into the shadows, and then wait. And, oh, there's Shazam! Wait, oh, but like, there's, you know, at the same time, like I really, really want Shazam to do well, and I feel I this Aquaman will. bump will kind of ride it out, but. I'm just not sure if Shazam will see the same wide appeal since it's there in between Captain Marvel and Infinity War. Yeah, but and I think we'll yeah, see. and that's and that's what I'm like. That's what I'm thinking too. I'm like, guys, like I know you want to compete with Marvel's up, and I'm not saying you can't get there one day. I'm just saying right now they obviously have the upper hand yeah. by a wide margin. So don't put your, you know, don't sandwich your movie between. Their two biggest movies that mm-hmm. arguably come well, I mean, at least one of them for sure, yeah. and the other one could be the other, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's like, you know, Aquaman, no, separate yourself, maybe go. I mean, 
I would avoid December this year just because Star Wars. Yeah. But at the same time, like that November ish game. Yeah, because maybe? Wonder Woman 2 got delayed, so you can put exactly, October, November, you know? and Shazam will fit right in there. Saying. And no one, you know, and I think overall that's going to help the movie. Or really, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, I don't know, just space it out because you don't want to put it. I don't know. I just feel like. I don't know. I just don't think that's a wise choice for them because they're going to get yeah. swamped. Because, I mean, once Infinity War comes out, all, any, and I'm not Infinity War. I'm Avengers. Sorry. Once Endgame Endgame comes out, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Avengers 4. Avengers 4. <laughs> once Avengers 4 comes out, any and all hype for Shazam, no matter how good Shazam is, once Avengers 4 drops, I mean, Shazam oh. could literally be the best movie I've ever seen, but when Avengers 4 drops, it's like, well. What's a Shazam? Sorry, I, yeah, you know. Like, Will you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I saw that one time. That's the guy with the cape. Yeah, I saw that. You know, like, it, it's not going to, you know, it's just not going to, even if it does great initially, it, the success isn't going to linger because of how soon between the two movies it is. It's like, bro, like, it's, I don't know, but. I mean, it's a bold move. If they want to make a statement, they're trying, but I don't think this is the best way to go. I think yeah. you need to build up some more before you get there. Yeah, like, I, I really want Shazam to do really well. I just have a feeling that at this point, everyone's already kind of picked the movies they're going to watch in the first half of next year, and I feel like uh-huh. Shazam's not going to be one of them, especially since an end game was moved into April. Right. We'll see. I think it's I think Shazam was early April, so it has a chance. Let's just hope that that's for it. <laughs> I mean, but it's still like I mean, Captain Marvel's early March, and it's like, all right, you got like maybe three weeks on both ends, but like, is that really gonna? Is that really yeah. enough? I mean, they still they still have a chance to delay it if they if they feel that would benefit the movie. It's already done, but like, if they so, feel it would benefit, it, I would personally go for it. I'm but, telling you, like, you got to give it at least a month after Endgame to have a real shot of getting yeah, some at serious least revenue, a month. but. <laughs> But you like know, at least like a month, month after Endgame, game, at least a month before Star Wars, somewhere in there. Yeah, not, yeah. Actually, somewhere, you, know what, somewhere, you might want to avoid Toy Story too, and I Frozen too. Honestly, <laughs> honestly I, okay, those I'm not as worried about because I I think a lot of I talk to a lot of people and like the consensus I've heard is why are we making Toy Story? Oh yeah, I agree. Like, it's still gonna make a billion dollars. Like, you know, Toy Story, but like no one cares. Yeah, like, like, it, it, <laughs> Like it is gonna do great, but it's like I don't want this, but I do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, I feel like that's gonna be a thing going mm-hmm. on. But at the same time, I think Shazam would have a much better chance going with that and Frozen too, because yeah. I think those are in a way different audiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the other big movie that came out on the same day as Aquaman was Bumblebee. You didn't see this, I guess, right? I did not, no. Okay. Well, you know I have a love-hate relationship with the with the Transformers franchise. I love the animated really stuff. True. I hate the Bayformers stuff. Bumblebee is legitimately, like, in the top five favorite movies from last year. It was amazing. Really? <laughs> yes. And okay. I don't... And, like... I, I'm not sure if I think this because it was just so exponentially better than the Bayformer stuff or if it actually was a good movie, but just from the opening shot, the the like number one complaint I have with the Bayformer Transformers movies is that every single Decepticon looks the same. They're all either gray or black or brown with like all have the same deep grovelly voice and you can't like especially in the third one like you can never tell who was who like like shockwave barricade sound they all looked like the same thing but from the very opening shot the opening shot is like a pan down onto cybertron and you just see like Transformers fighting each other. Like, you see all that war happening on Cybertron, which is what I've been wanting for the past, what is it, 12 years? No, well, 11 when this movie came out, but still, I've wanted that for 11 years ever since the first one. That is how you start a Transformers franchise. You pan onto Cybertron, show the war that is happening there, show individual Transformers. Like, you saw RC, she's bright pink. You saw Wheeljack, you could tell that he's Wheeljack. Optimus Prime looks like G1 Optimus Prime. They you like 
every single transformer looks unique it looks like they should look and then it pans over to like a lineup of all the decepticons coming over a hill you saw Soundwave, starscream thundercracker um uh, mm. shockwave they all ha- were colorful they all had distinct voices they all it, it, it was just so beautiful like i legitimately almost <laughs> cried because of like <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like me and my brother just no, like freaking out over just how just my my inner child just like saw that and was like this this it's is cool. like how I imagined these looking like when I was when I was five. Like it was oh it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and and like from from there there was like I think after the the big opening five minutes of the movie on Cybershine happened, like I think they only cut back there like one other time, but regardless, the the action sequences were like you could actually tell what was going on. There wasn't any shaky cam from what I could tell. Like you actually cared about the human characters for once. Um a Bumblebee like was actually a compelling character because the main thing about the Transformers in you know, the Bayformers movies is that not only are they not distinct in their colors or design, they aren't distinct in their personality either. Every single one outside of their gimmick are exactly the same character. Yeah, Bumblebee, like, he feels like his own living, breathing, you know, thing. And, like, all the other, when he interacted, like, other Transformers interacted with each other, they all felt very unique, which I love that. Again, every single human character was actually liked. The military felt actually like a realistic and not just, you know, they they were more nuanced than just, oh, they're the bad guys because they are the military and they want to hunt the Decepticons. Like they they kind of the these two Decepticons like came to Earth looking for Bumblebee because Bumblebee went there to try to like kind of set up a base for the Autobots to come for a safe haven. So the these two Decepticons like went to the military to be like, hey, there's a fugitive from our planet here. We we want to go kill him. So, so the military like helps them out finding him, but then and then uh one scene the like the head military dude was like, Yeah, after after we help them, after they kill their like their friend, they'll just kill them all. It's like yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like their their name, they totally. John Cena's character at one point literally said, "They're called Decepticons." Does that that not raise any red flags? <laughs> <laughs> I like how someone actually like pointed out like, oh, "Isn't the name a little ominous?" No, no, no just just me. No. And I I love John Cena's character. Like, if if John Cena, if his character was like kind of a pseudo introduction of the gi joe universe into the transformers universe i'd be all for that because like he felt his movie was set in the 80s by the way and he felt like mm-hmm. just an 80s action star like military dude that from ever from every 80s movie ever and like it, it just fit perfectly <laughs> like he was goofy he was kind of not dumb but like he was kind of laissez-faire like it was just which is really fun to like just watch him interact with other people he was like it was there I there definitely were like some issues like with pacing at times um but outside of just like a few little nitpicks I I honestly don't have many problems at all with this movie and like it having a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes I kind of agree with that and again that that number might be inflated because every other Bayformer movie is so terrible. They just rank it that high because, you know, they're so dull. So like, oh, if only one actually good will rank it higher. So, yeah. I just. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm a little upset that maybe it's because it launched right next to Aquaman. Maybe because every other Transformers movie, as far as I know, released in the summer. This one released in December for some reason. Um, and because of that, it just it didn't get as big of a bump as other Transformers movies. Because I think the last three Transformers movies made over a billion dollars. So far, this one's only made three hundred sixty-seven million, which is still, uh, which is still over double their investment. I think it's almost triple, uh, but because I think it has like a thirty-five okay. million budget, so that's like almost triple their budget. 
so it's profitable, and I just hope it's profitable enough for them to keep making these Transformers movies in this they style. Probably, they probably it, will. Because there's a lot of things about this movie that, like, clearly show that they made this movie without caring at all about the canon of the previous movies. Like, yeah. it was made very, very clear how Bumblebee lost his voice in the originals. He, he lost a fight with Megatron, and that's how he lost his voice. And, like, there are some other things that just clearly are just retconning the previous movies that just didn't make any sense. And if they could just kind of, like, Days of Future Past it, where, like, some things, you know, are the same, th- some things are changed moving forward, mm-hmm. I'd be all for that, so. Right. Set it up and put it the right way. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they could. Yeah, because I mean, a lot. Of, I don't think too many people are attached to those trans, to like you know, Michael Bay Transformers <laughs> movies. So I think, yeah, like no one, even, no one's like, like, like only thirteen year olds like, even like kind of like them just because of the action. Yeah, I, I don't know. Giant robots, you know. Yeah, which like giant robots are cool, but they're not. They're not. The move. The ones in these movies are not cool enough to carry this franchise to. A, these movies to a billion dollars. It just it just doesn't work that way. At least it should. Hmm. Then hopefully, like within two or three years, we can get more Transformers movies rolling that look as and are as good as this. Also, they, Michael Bay, as far as I know, had no had no hand in this movie at all. So that's why it was so good. Yeah. So yeah. Next. Did you actually see Into the Spider Verse? I did. Nice. Um, okay. I I legitimately believe this took a lot of soul searching for me to like finally come to this conclusion. Mm-hmm. Into the Spider Verse might be my favorite superhero movie. Period. It is that good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> Whoa, let's, let's, let's back up just a second. You're talking anything. Yeah. Any superhero movie yeah. ever. Dude, like, it's what? great. But, like, it is fantastic. Come on, what is one flaw? Name one flaw. I'm not movie. saying it's the, I'm not saying the movie <laughs> has flaw. I'm just saying it's not the best superhero movie that's, like, you're telling me all the Marvel movies all like the dark knight trilogy all this stuff like all these movies I, you're just like nah stay i down. legitimately like i tried to like pair it with infinity war with white panther with you know any captain america movie. Ragnarok, like i yeah there was not a single movie that i tried to pair it with that had a more compelling main character a more you know just that was just more gorgeous to look at that had a better soundtrack that had a better score yeah had a better supporting cast like just every single part of this movie just hit it out of the park and i i, I just could not justify putting any other superhero movie on top of this it was that good in my eyes <laughs> oh, i mean like i'm with you it's a great movie i can't i can't say it's the best i've seen though i can't like i that's disrespect for me that's disrespectful to other movies <laughs> that's I've fair seen. i just but... can't do it I mean, there are also there are some people who are trying to say that Spider Man Two is better, which like, you're wrong if you think that. <laughs> I'll, like, I'll, I'll, like, I'll, I could maybe budge on saying that some other of the live action superhero movies are better than, like, than Spider Verse. But if you're trying to say that Spider Verse is not the best Spider Man movie, then I will, then I will definitely argue with you. <laughs> okay, I can see. I can. Okay, I could get behind that. I could get behind that. Yeah. But as far as any superhero movie, I have I have to formally disagree <laughs> on that one. I just like I'm not saying the movie has like glaring flaws or this can't be. I think it's just that it's not. I mean, because the thing about some of these movies that is like, well, for one thing, it doesn't have like okay, you know how Infinity War like that is built on like you know ten years of movies and stuff. Like you can't, in my eyes. The amount of buildup that that culminated to and how it perfectly brought everything together, I think you can't discredit that with just one movie. I'm not or discrediting like, it. I'm just saying that 
I mean, that's describe, but just like, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's, no, I, I understand. There's so many movies. I just can't, I don't know. I just can't. I just can't. It's, it's, I, there's too many good movies. I can, I can put it out there, but I can't put it ahead of everything. Mm -hmm. But, but I like, mean, just, I, I really, really did try to find just one thing I didn't like about it. And I, I just, could not think of a single thing I didn't like about Spider Verse, and like, I worked to like, be the first the only... big animated movie in this, you know, potential Spider Man, Spider Verse, multiverse, you know, universe thing. Mm -hmm. I, pff, that's good. <laughs> yeah, you're saying. I mean, like, I yeah, I like. I mean, I like it a lot too. I think the characters are, you know, really good. Like Miles Morales is done very, very well. I think that's a good dynamic. They have their him and like Peter have a good like mentor but not like the you know he's supposed to be this all wise he's really not mm -hmm. like you know stuff but i mean he shows up like 50 pounds overweight yeah. and stuff like i thought that was hilarious i mean oh, yeah. like i think that's great i do i I'm, i was a little disappointed that they didn't really explore the characters of like the other spider verse outside the main mm -hmm. three because like you know spider ham and spider you know spider man noir and like what what is it i i i knew the name of the other one the like Penny Japanese Parker? Girl. Yeah. Penny the Parker. Japanese I don't remember like her, her yeah, like, like, Spider-Man name, but it's Penny that's Parker. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like, I like those characters. I just mm -hmm. feel like they could have made them more integral mm -hmm. to the story. And I feel I, like they were kind of just along for the ride. I kind of feel like that's by design. Um, this was really Miles' movie. It was, like, to introduce right. him. It was introduced how he became Spider-Man. And having all these other Spider-People come out of the multiverse is there to show that like anyone can be spider-man like anyone could be bit by a radioactive spider or spider mm -hmm. or radioactive pig and um, <laughs> case. like it was really miles's story and like they could easily spin off any of these other characters into their own universe like spider gwen is getting her own movie oh yeah spider versus getting a sequel they could have other you know universes come in they could have a spider ham like even like like a show or a movie like yeah. there are other opportunities for these characters to get more action outside of this movie and i feel just the motif of the movie was made even stronger just by how these characters were like were in it and i also really liked the framing device of how they introduced every single spider-man every single time with the like mm -hmm. So the let me tell you this story <laughs> one more time. Yeah, it's like a comic book of their yeah. origin story. And, I am the one and only Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. <laughs> and then when it got to the Drew's like Noir, Ham, and Penny all at the same time, like all like all three at the same time, like that, yeah. <laughs> that was genius. <laughs> that was really well done. Yeah, it shows their dynamic and how like unfamiliar they are with other people being yeah. Spider-Man, not just them. Like yeah. that was done really well. And the Prowler, the Prowler was such a good villain. Like yeah. if if not only just for his music that the the music in general of this movie was just phenomenal but his score yeah. like when he was chasing after peter was so menacing and ah <laughs> like you if you need if anyone hasn't seen this movie yet you need to see it in theaters it, it is not it would not do it justice seeing it like on netflix or on the computer or anything like yeah the score of this movie needs to be heard in a in a big theater and then after do you want spoilers for this movie uh i mean uh spoiler warning now yeah, okay but yeah, we'll after so <laughs> after um the prowler after we found out that the prowler was actually miles's uncle which that was a which i didn't know anything about the prowler so that was actually mm -hmm. a surprise to me uh, for the longest time throughout the movie i kind of thought that like just from the way the Prowler was dressed, it kind of looked like Deadpool. So I, I was we were like, is it like an ultra dimension Deadpool type thing going on? But whatever. <laughs> um, after we found out that Miles, that he was Miles's uncle, and then Kingpin, who I also love Kingpin's movie, killed him. The montage scene where Miles finally became Spider Man, like, kind of incorporated. Mm -hmm. Uh, his his uncle's theme music into his own theme like that oh that yeah. was just so perfect it was really good mm -hmm. and that month I'll admit that like montage where like he gets his suit and like he starts going like that was really powerful I really felt that I was I, I, I mean, was like All right. I understand why they did but I kind of wish they hadn't shown you know most of that sequence in the trailers already but like 
It's their Sony. They're gonna. That's what they do. Yeah, it is what they do. But they did it well, though. Like even oh, though yeah. I'd seen part of it, I still wasn't like, okay, here we go. I was like, oh, this was great. You know, mm. it's, it was still really nice to see. And it was a different experience in theaters, obviously. Yeah. For just a commercial. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, it's needless to say, having a ninety-seven percent Rotten Tomatoes is very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's really good. I, think I cannot argue with that. Unfortunately, like I kind of expected this since it is an animated movie and anything animated outside of Disney and Pixar stuff generally doesn't get you know that much buzz outside of just word of mouth. So it only has only made a hundred, no, sorry, three hundred two million as of right now. Mm-hmm. But that's still really good on on a ninety million budget. Yeah, so, I mean that's what three almost yeah three like three and a half times. Yeah. Good on you, Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, they're doing yeah, they're doing fine. And yeah, the sequels will be even better, I think. Because yeah. like, yeah, but like you said, the art design's really good. Like if you like comic books even a little bit, you'll love this art design. Like it's yeah. so nice. And like how they have like words and sounds occasionally oh, like, on the yes, on the screen. So that was so well done. I was just like, oh, and when so Miles cool. was like talking to himself in his head when he was first getting his powers, like and the the words were like in comic book mm-hmm. font, like on the screen, just that was really good. Yeah, and Spider Ham and Penny and Nora were like all in different art styles, just yeah, yeah, that that was really well done. And the humor, like you could tell, this movie was directed by the same people that made the Lego Movie. Like it was very uh-huh. similar humor. Like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, stuff would just be funny, and they just, like, go with it, or, like, mm-hmm. something will happen, and they will just, like, yeah, this is what we're doing. <laughs> he picks dogs in this universe, so I don't want to freak him out. <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, you uh, talking oh, pig yeah. is the most, you know, the most terrifying thing. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> you know, we got, what, six people sticking to the ceiling, but, you know, the talking pig threw them mm-hmm. off. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I highly recommend, if it's still in theaters in your area, I highly recommend watching it oh yeah check it out it'll be in theaters for at least till the end of the month probably yeah probably and i i i also want more people to see bumblebee if you're even like a slightly even like a latent transformers fan if you were a transformers fan at any point in your life you owe it to yourself to watch the the first 10 minutes just the first 10 minutes you walk (laughs) out and be just fine it's like i don't i don't want to say that the first 10 minutes like was the best part of the movie because it but it kind of was and like <laughs> legitimately if i just watched the first 10 minutes and walked out i would have the exact same opinion i do now of the movie but so that's i guess that's good right. it didn't get worse from there yeah, <laughs> yeah. it just kind of, it started off strong and just kept going yeah, yeah it kind of plateaued and hey yeah. sure and then spider right. it, well, yeah, started I'll keep off going it just it yeah like all these i mean i you know i haven't seen aquaman yet but if it's as good as i'm expecting which is a six hey Good in my book. Yeah. So enough talking about this not Disney stuff. Let's see what Disney's up to now. <laughs> Maybe someday, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to Kevin Feige, he there's a high chance that he will get the green lit the green light for making Fox based superhero movies in the first half of 2019. Ooh. We can easily see the first Fantastic Four action movie by early next year. Ooh, a crowd intensifying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Mm. It's been so long. And, like, it's going to be a little die. annoying. Like, if if whatever happens in Endgame happens, like, if Iron Man actually does die, if Captain America, just if whatever happens in Endgame yeah. happens, we're not going to see these core characters interacting with. You know the Fantastic Four or yeah. you know, Magneto or whatever. Like, Chef missed them. Yeah. Oh well. Still, I mean, but I mean, but that also means that we have more characters that we already love that we're gonna love even more. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah. will it always be a hole in our heart for whoever ha- does probably die in Endgame at the same time? You know, like, oh, now we can have new stories with the X Men or the Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. or, you know, or whoever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll still have like Spider Man. We'll still have cut to Marvel, Doctor Strange, Black Panther. Like, we'll still, yeah, still have plenty of characters for these people to bounce off of. Yeah, it won't. They won't all be gone. Mm-hmm. Although, without Iron Man and Captain America, potentially, maybe we don't know. Oof. It, 
we won't like really be able to get like an Avengers versus X Men I've wanted for the past ten years. But that would I mean it wouldn't yeah, I mean it wouldn't be the same Avengers, but theoretically the Avengers would still exist. It just might be but Yeah, they would it might we easily could just get another iteration of Iron Man and Captain America with like Sarah yeah. Bucky as Cap and whatever her name is as Iron Iron Maiden, but yeah. Yeah, it just wouldn't be quite the same. But I don't know. Well, yeah, right. Endgame hasn't even come out yet, so maybe no one dies. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, or. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they all die again. <laughs> the other oh, half dies yeah. and they stay dead. That's, that's what I'm honestly thinking, but you know, theory is real later, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of characters who were seemingly dead, the defenders. Um, uh, it was maybe Kevin that Feige. They were <laughs> <laughs> it was Kevin Feige or someone said that it's is very possible that the Disney Plus streaming service could resurrect the defenders shows. So, yeah, that's that's always nice nice to hear. That's like, because yeah, again, Daredevil, Daredevil was just getting good. Luke Cage, yeah, was always really good. Iron Fist second season was way better than his first one. And again, not you know, not hard to be better, but, but progress. No, yeah, progress. <laughs> I think Jessica not Jones awful. is about to get canceled too. Punisher is just kind of there by itself. So, if yeah, if if they can you know reboot these franchises on Disney's streaming service, go for it. Especially if there is kind of a way to like incorporate, if this is kind of a platform to incorporate them into the MCU, that would be even better. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I mean, if if they want to try it, then sure. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really see that happening though. I don't know, just something. I don't know. There's always been like this, not. Like kind of like a barrier between like you know Netflix series or just TV series in general, mm-hmm. and that because like the same thing with like Agents of Shield, like you know it like it had like some characters like you know go to and from, but I never thought like it could really like cross over yeah. completely. You know, and, like it you could really... watch you could watch Avengers two without watching Agents of Shield and know exactly what was going on, even though Agents of Shield actually like kind of led up to Age of Ultron, but mm-hmm. you know exactly what's happening. Like, right. You need to watch it. Right. So, like, I, yeah, like, it could, but, I mean, I don't think it yeah. will. It just doesn't fit in my mind. Yeah. But at the same time, characters like Loki and Scarlet Witch are going to have their own TV show or streaming yeah. show, whatever the new word's going to yeah. be when everything's yeah. streaming. But, yeah. Yeah, but I feel like they're using that because it might be... <laughs> Well, Loki already got like you know. Loki's already very dead. I don't know if he's. Yeah, gonna die. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think Loki's gonna make a resurrection this time. Like you know, I think I think he's gone for good. So TV show. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we'll see. Scarlet Witch. I mean, they did, but like I don't know if she's actually like she's, gone. Gone. She's probably gonna come back, especially, especially since you know the X Men are now part of. Are gonna be part yeah, of the MCU. That's true. And she well, is yeah. technically an X Men, which again I and keep forgetting that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's in the X Men. Yeah. Well, Pietro too, though. That's the thing. And he's been. I mean, if he's coming back, he's been dead for a hot minute. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I had a theory back when Infinity War, one of the theories from Infinity War that Quicksilver, like at the end of it, would somehow be resurrected. So yeah, like, like, yeah. Remember that. we thought the the lightning from um Thor's hammer or axe or Stormbreaker or whatever was um. Ph from Quicksilver. <laughs> I remember that. I was that was an incorrect prediction. <laughs> but, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was an honest mistake. Like I mean, it was a theory too. Like you know, it's a know. theory. Theories are kind of supposed to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, you know, like if all my theories are right, I end up with the last Jedi. Like you know, like <laughs> yeah. you know, if I get that, then I'm all right. Like you know, I'll be all right. But, yeah. So. In today's entry of why are they making this? Pirates of the <laughs> I love that that's a segment. That's so applicable to like so many things. I mean honestly to- you can put Toy Story 4. Like I love yeah. Toy Story, but honestly you can put Toy Story 4 in there. That's like bro. Like geez, go on, go on. Apparently the Pirates of the Caribbean reboot will not have Johnny Depp in it. 
They might still have Jack Sparrow, but no Johnny Depp. Which like one one That's part worse. of me is like Johnny Depp has done some kind of scummy things in the past couple of years, so I get it. <laughs> but <laughs> Jack Sparrow is kind of kind of got a spot to get. Jack the reason you watch Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. And like maybe they get some yeah, other, I mean, you know, a younger actor to play him, it'll be just as good, but I don't know. Uh, will they though? I mean, okay, here's my thing. Like, Pirates of the Caribbean already kind of lost my particular interest a few movies back. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like and like, yeah, Jack Sparrow kept it coming back. But like, if you try to reboot it and just use different characters that's one thing but if you're gonna reboot it but then like do a jack sparrow that's not johnny depp yeah. then i'm like okay now i'm like really not on board yeah like, like go all the in just completely new story new characters do everything yeah yeah don't just you know like because i mean honestly like i know we talk about like roles that were like made or like you know like all actors that made roles them basically like jack sparrow yeah. is johnny depp with a mm-hmm. pirate hat like you know like it you can't i don't think anyone else can do jack sparrow the same way personally yeah. so i don't i don't know how i see that going mm-hmm. but no. you know because we'll see you know, i think like, that movie's coming out in 2021 so uh we'll see i might get some concept art or something at d23 either this year or next year whatever but, yeah, eh. but. <laughs> Not ex- not excited about it. I'll put it that way. Until yeah, they yeah. show me something that makes me just like lose it, like, eh. Mm-hmm. So, in other nerd news, there was actually uh, quite a bit of weird gaming news that happened in December of last year. The first we're going to talk about is the Soldier Game consoles that Soldier Boy. Try to pedal as his own thing. <laughs> I guess you heard about this. Me, I didn't believe it, and then my brother showed it to me. And I could. <laughs> it's real. He's really doing this, and it's. Oh man, like it's bad. Yeah, it's essentially <laughs> like, what this really is. Bad. Is Soldier Boy like said on Twitter that he was getting into the games industry, which like. Okay, was it gonna be some like Android based, you know, top box yeah. kind of like other people have done this before? Like I know I think Amazon has something similar to this. Um, there are some other people like the Ouya that like have like little Android based boxes that have like some like phone games and other like couple of exclusive, mm-hmm. but they're not like good. You know, yeah. something similar and cheap like that. No, what this is is a product that you can get on Amazon for like $100 that just plays ROMs of old NES, SNES, PlayStation games that he is just slapping his name on and selling for $300. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It was, it was not okay for these Chinese based, you know, ROM boxes to be available. But because they're from China, like, their laws there are, like, so muddy that, like, they can't, Nintendo and Capcom and whatnot can't really do anything about it. Right. But since Soldier Boy, you know, tried to make that his own thing, selling illegal ROMs that are not even his console in the first place, <laughs> he got sued. <laughs> like, I mean... <laughs> My thing is, why did you, like, you can't just take stuff that you assume, like, you can't take other people's stuff that you just assume they're not using yeah. and be like, hey, this is not, like, that doesn't, that's not how it works. you know, like, that, that's not how, you know, it's like, it's like if I'm writing a paper and I take an article from, you know, like, some journal or something, and go, oh, they haven't used this in 10 years, this came out 10 years ago, it's fine, I can do it, but, like, that's still plagiarism, plagiarism. <laughs> like, it doesn't, you know, just because they're not using it now doesn't mean that you can just use it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like... And, like, some people that did buy the the the, the Chinese one that, you know, Soldier Boy was just rebranding, no one actually ever got the Soldier, the Soldier Game console, but some people bought the one that, you know, it basically was. 
the UI is terrible. All of these games, like the the little icon that shows you what the game is, is not more often than not is not the actual game. Like the original Donkey Kong Country, the thumbnail for it is Donkey Kong Country Returned for the Wii. That's not the same thing. <laughs> like every mm-hmm. single Zelda game is like the thumbnail is a different Zelda game than like what yeah. it actually is. It's like it's, you had like one it's, job. It's you had one like job. It's very bad. <laughs> like it's it's rough. But it's okay. It's it has package. <laughs> I mean, honestly, though, my thing is, why would anyone buy this? Like you knew this was gonna be like. No offense, but I mean, I would not buy anything from Soldier Boy. Oh. <laughs> like, why would you do this? Like, and, you knew this and like Soldier Boy, it would be kind of be one thing if he was still relevant. He made that one song back in two thousand nine. Oh jeez. Have you heard uh, of anything from Soldier Boy since? No. Oh no. I mean, it's not like obviously Soldier Boy's not relevant in the rap game, but at the same time, it's like even if he was. I still, still think it would be really stupid. Yeah. But the fact that he's not just makes it worse. And of course, because he was getting hated on and, you know, being called out for all the, you know, stupid stuff he was doing, he decided it'd be a good idea to pull the race card and call all of the people, you know, homophobic slurs and like just bad people. What if he had a PR yeah. firm, they would tell him, hey, don't say this stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, yeah, he's not. He's, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Like, it's, it, he's a rapper. I mean, like, not, okay, no, that's offensive to rappers. I apologize, rappers. He's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> he is dumb. <laughs> that's, 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 they're, they're intelligent rappers. I apologize. But no, he is not one of them. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, after all this backlash, after everything, he finally, he also, like, at what one tweet like called out Nintendo was like, "What well, Nintendo is not gonna do anything? They, you know, they're not doing this themselves, and that they have the the NES and the SNES classic. So, yeah, you're you're coaching on the property. <laughs> like they're not gonna do anything." Two days later, he removed it from his website. Yeah, <laughs> I bet because he probably yeah like <laughs> he probably like, got sued by the police threw into a lawsuit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you can't do that. <laughs> I mean, that's just I mean that's common. Like that's any, you can't do that. No, no, you can't just take something and be like, "Hey, this is mine now. Give me money for it." Like that's not yours. To, yeah. You don't have the right to give this to you know sell this mm-hmm. like that. And like the first wave of Soldier Boy stuff, which he didn't call it the Soldier Boy, you know, mirroring the Game Boy. It was the Soldier Games console. So whatever, missed opportunity there. <laughs> the oh, first man. wave. The first wave was like a handheld device and a and a console that just played the same ROMs. And then the next wave was the Soldier Boy Fuse console that was supposed okay. to run in like 4K 60 frames per second. But what are you gonna run in 4K? They're old ROMs of NES and SNES games. Like what are you doing? <laughs> Who's gonna that's how pay you know. 400 that's how you know. Well that's what I'm saying. That's how you know he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just mm-hmm. Like, he's just saying things that sound good and, like, hoping they make a sentence and they don't. And it's yeah, no. Like, eh. Yeah. Well, shortly after he, um, you know, took this illegal stuff off to the website, he went, took to Twitter again and was like, don't worry, guys, the Soldier Games reign is not dead. So, uh, like, a couple of weeks later, he released... I don't remember if it actually has, like, a name, but... Um, essentially what it looks like is like a PS Vita that mm. is a calculator, is a flashlight, is all these other applications on it that like, you know, most phones have, but nowhere on the website, nowhere, anywhere I could find, does it have a single sentence or anything that says that it plays games. You're basically playing, you're basically playing... Paying nine hundred like ninety-nine dollars just to have a fancy calculator. Sounds like yeah, sounds like a phone that can't do phone stuff. <laughs> basically. It sounds like, like you know, you know how like phone has like extra like you know, flashlight calculator, like um you know, like apps that you mm-hmm. kind of use and it, but it doesn't have like call and texting internet, like it doesn't have the main stuff you use phones for anymore. Mm-hmm. 
That's what it sounds like. So like, I think that's going to be yeah, like at least, gonna... at least an iPad. You can download stuff from the ice from the, the Apple Store. Yeah, but I mean, you can't do that with his thing. Like that's. I was like, I could tell there was no mention of games anywhere on this new page. So like, what's the point? What do you? I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I mean, <laughs> also the PS Vita was never a popular system, so why model it after that? <laughs> maybe try it. I mean, I think that might be his idea. Maybe like try something that's not that popular and maybe try to re reinvent it for himself. No one, and then maybe, because because yeah. you base it off of an unpopular product, no one's gonna care. <laughs> or maybe maybe people won't notice. Yeah. That too. Because, I mean, honestly, like, yeah. a lot of people probably won't. Yeah, so. But they're still not going to buy it because it's a terrible well, investment. But, you know. We'll see what comes of this. Maybe he does actually, you know, release, you know, a banger console that does play, you know, actually like real games at 60 frames per second 4K. But, or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, or, you know, it just it, it goes for maybe another year and then it falls yeah. to pieces. But, you know, I mean, I'm not a pessimist, but I mean, hey. We'll see. I'm speaking, just being logical. Speaking of people trying to enter the console race, oh, um, have you heard of a game called Project Cars? Came out mm -hmm. on the first one came out in 2014, and Project Cars Two I think came out in 2017 or last year. Project Cars. Uh -huh. Okay, well, so, no, it's like a sim racing game. That's fine as far as okay. racing game goes. It's it's okay. Well, okay. the developer behind that is Slightly Mad Studios. And even though, as far as I can tell, they've only really made this one game and maybe a couple of other, like, kind of niche things, they're apparently trying to enter the console market with new, you know, with with claiming it'll be 4K, 60 frames per second, and it'll come out within the next two or three years and be future-proof, so... They'll have the t they'll have because like the main problem main problem with like modern consoles is that when they release they're already like a year or two behind from modern PCs. They are mm. claiming that the slightly mad box or whatever will be future proofed where it'll be like a year ahead of modern consoles and or more sorry modern PCs and that actually have to catch up. Which I don't know if you can really make that affordable, but we'll see. Um, one kind of weird thing about this is that he's claiming that this that this new console will have no exclusives. Even the new Project Cars or other Slightly Mad Studios games will not be exclusive to this box. It'll just be a system you can play third-party games on, and that's it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> What's the point? Um, I, I, I don't, guess. I don't. Sorry, I, don't question. I mean, <laughs> why? <laughs> like you know, God, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it would be one thing if Ubisoft or Activision or even EA decided to jump in the console market because you know they have the games, they have the money, they have the mind share of the consumers to maybe you know to maybe actually make it. I'm not. I'm not saying that, you know, other other companies and whatnot shouldn't try to enter the console market because there's been three console makers for like 20 years now, and no one else has really ever tried outside of the Ouya, which just got bodied. <laughs> that wasn't even like really competition. <laughs> no. but like if if someone else wanted to try, I wouldn't. Yeah, I would, I would almost welcome it if, if it was a good idea. But these people in particular, when Project Cars is your biggest game, when, like, that's... Actually, the first one had to be kickstarted. I just, yeah. I just don't... I don't know. Nobody really knows. I don't yeah, trust I don't you. Think that's, no. <laughs> they, don't have, they haven't proved their worth nearly enough no. yet. And also, change the, they're, they're kind of called the Madbox. Like... The mad box sounds like a Chinese ripoff of the Xbox, so just don't change, make it something unique. Yeah, don't, don't, just, yeah no, no, no box. Don't yeah, call like box. don't, don't. Xbox like that. That was like the first of the, you know, blank box, thing. Mm. So you, you're good there. But then, like it seems like every other system that's tried to come out, I saw the Ouya is like, the Amazon box. 
or the Google box is like just no, have a have a name. <laughs> yeah, just be your own thing. Yeah. We'll see. I think they said it'll come out within two or three years, so we'll see if anything actually comes of this. Maybe not. We don't know. Now, lastly, in the weird game news, apparently Jack Black has his own YouTube gaming channel now. What? It's called Jablinski Games. <laughs> wait, 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 what does he play? <laughs> he, hasn't actually, he hasn't actually played any games yet. The first okay. video was just an announcement video and it got over 7 million views. His second video was like a, a video where like he like kind of freaked out that he already has a million subscribers. That was the next Friday from the first one. The next Friday, he went to an arcade and just played old arcade like cabinets and just had fun in an arcade and he filmed it all. And then the next week, he just did that again. But like, it's weird. But like, I actually kind of like it. <laughs> just his personality, just like, yeah, just the way he does it. I could easily see him being like a very entertaining gaming personality. Yeah, and I mean, Jack Black's just, I mean, he's a very, he's one of those actors that you always just thought liked and thought was funny. So, like, I'm mm. moving to this industry where a lot of people are in the games and are, do what are passionate about games. I think that's going to be, you know, it's going to be fun to watch, especially if he's as passionate as we are. Like, he's going to enjoy it. And we're like we, haven't actually, we haven't actually seen him play an actual game yet. So, maybe his, like, streaming setup or whatever might not be that appealing and maybe. Him actually playing Fortnite or whatever might not be super interesting mm -hmm. to watch, but like, yeah, I mean, I might, that sounds a little interesting. What I really want from this is I think it was like 2008 or 9, he released a game called Brutal Legend. It was a game developed by some studio with like he produced it, he plays the main character in it. It basically is essentially his game. I want him to at some point play that, like, have a full playthrough of that. <laughs> just play it straight. Don't even like, don't even act like it's his game. Just like pretend it's completely new to him and just just play through. It. I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and people won't even know. <laughs> Honestly, probably not. It's like, huh? The, 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 the guy who voices this character, he, he sounds handsome or something like. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy's love his voice. It's so masculine. It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I just want him doing it. I honestly just want him playing his natural Libre voice. Like, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like, he has a video just going, like, you're so much fun. I love to play. Like, I don't know what it is, but, like, I just, that's how I imagine Jack Black talks in real life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the time. It's great. Yeah, and there, there's probably some, like, really bad movie tie in game for Nacho Libre for, like, the PS2 or something. I don't oh, know. Oh, sure. Then. Oh, I remember when that movie came so out, great. but like, if he tried to play that, that would also be hilarious. Just That would be so good. I would so watch that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, hey, like, I think this is a decent idea. I mean, I'm it's in. a little weird for, like, a celebrity to be, to try to make a big presence on YouTube, but, like, there's something about Jack Plaque, just, it's just appealing. <laughs> yeah, and he has, a, I mean, I know he recently did that. Was it like the house with the wall or house, clock in the wall? House with the clock in his walls. Yeah. 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 He usually did that. But other than that, he has kind of been, you know, he's kind of been low key in the movie industry lately. Yeah. He was in that Jumanji movie last year. Oh, yeah. That is, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That, he was great in that, too. That movie was great. Like, he was the best. He character. was playing like the bratty girl in a man's body, right? Yes. Okay. And it was amazing. It was yeah. amazing. Dude. Oh, my God. Have you seen that movie? I haven't gotten around to it. You, you, I would definitely check that out. That movie is awesome. Okay, I'm, it's on my list to watch it eventually. Yeah. But that was the movie of twenty, what the twenty seventeen or eight? I think it was very early twenty eighteen. Okay, that was one of the movies of the year that I was like, that was a movie that I was expecting almost nothing from, but got a lot out of. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, sometimes just a movie. That's like, hey, that, that's good. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a win. It was definitely a win. Yeah. <clears throat> now, moving on to <coughs> Nerd Clash. <laughs> Perfect. Moves. Um, so, this week, I think it'll be interesting to do another kind of predictive one where 
we will try to predict which of the two big, arguably the two biggest movies that are coming out this year, Avengers Endgame and Star Wars Episode Nine. Which one do we think will make more money at the box office? Oh, okay. <sighs> okay, well, that's the thing. Both of them are closing out on the story, so that's a big thing going for mm-hmm. both of them. I think Star Wars has a little bit more of an advantage because, in terms of, like, it's coming out later in December, and December is Star Wars month. Everyone yeah. knows that. And also, that's why it's like, failed, because it's yeah, not going yeah, to Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but... There's also probably still some backlash from, you know, the last Jedi haters. Mm-hmm. So they might not be as, you know, because Star Wars is dead. They ruined it. So, you know, maybe that might have some it's negative effects. It's still going, effect. so you're wrong. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, <laughs> I, I can't speak for him. I don't know. I don't get it. But, you know, yeah. but, you know, that might, you know, that might hurt. <sighs> and then again, but then of course, that, but everyone's going to see Avengers. Because we all have like, to know how. Uh, if you saw yeah, Avengers I, three, you have to see Avengers four. And everyone saw Avengers three. Yeah. <laughs> Twice. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and episode I mean, eight also ended on a kind of ended on a cliffhanger, but like not as much though. Could I could easily see anyway. an argument for if that's where you stopped on your Star Wars adventure, like you would be satisfied. I don't agree with that, but I could see the argument. Yeah, but Still, like it's, Avengers. Like Infinity War, you have to know how have to. Like that. That can't be it. That can't be it. Yeah. At the same time, I feel like Star Wars still is one of the most powerful brands on the planet. Mm-hmm. Like, say what you want about the Last Jedi or Solo or Rogue One or you know Rebels or whatever else, you know, subpar Star Wars media that's been out there the past couple of years. It's still very prevalent in pop culture. It's still oh, yeah, just a juggernaut in just every category it's in. So yeah. it's very it's possible that episode nine could just break two yeah. billion like it's nothing. Yeah, I mean, and like the thing is, it's the movie series. Everyone, like, if you see, like, if someone hasn't seen all the Marvel movies, that's one thing. Mm. If you haven't seen Star Wars, you live under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> like, if there's, and like the people that haven't, they like actively chose to not watch it. Right, you have to reason. make a point. That's what I'm saying. You have yeah. to make a point not to out mm-hmm. of spite almost. Yeah. Like, Star Wars is way too popular. There's no way. Yeah. Like, I... <sighs> but... I... I think just by the way it's been built up all, you know, for the past 10, 11 years, just by the way Infinity War ended, I mm-hmm. think Avengers Endgame has the edge here, but... Yeah, Sam. I, I mean, I could easily see episode nine just somehow like have like a resurgence in the star wars fan fandom i don't you know, I, I don't I, I i hear you but i don't think so i don't think it's going to be that close and mm. the thing is like marvel movies are still at its like peak right now you know it's yeah. just good it's still right up there so i think as long as it's up here you know every like you know every avengers movie like both of them is like black panther like they're going to be in that billion to two billion range. Yeah. Like, that's where we're sitting at right now. Yeah. So, like, and, like, Star Wars is, like, here, but it's not here. Like, this movie isn't at that level yet, mm-hmm. particularly. Like, The Force Awakens was, because I had been away, but, like, this one isn't. Because, you know, we've seen some Star Wars movies. The last technical Star Wars movie that came out didn't do so hot. You know, there's there's enough against this movie to make it not at the at the peak level that mm. Avengers 4 is at right now. And it's just because you have to know how it ends. There's new characters you want to see. You know, I mean, you got, you, you got to know. Yeah. You got to know. Like, you can't, if you, like, you have to go within the first week, let alone see it at all. Like, mm-hmm. the, I this movie is going to make so much money. Yeah. Like, it, it's not even fair. And the thing is, like, <sighs> Yeah, it's gonna like even though it's got more stuff around it, like you know Shazam and Captain Marvel the month before, and like you know it's got summer movies and stuff like it's right in that mix. It doesn't. Neither of those movies you're gonna see over Infinity War. That's just not how it works. No, no, yeah, like it's 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 just not. It's Mm -hmm. I mean it's gonna be the number one movie of the year. Like it's 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 been decided. Like it hasn't been decided, but we we know. We know, like Star Wars is gonna be unless Star Wars is just 
the greatest movie ever created. Mm. And I'm just starting like the great like it. I just don't see this one at this time beating Avengers Four. I think it all depends on the official name of Episode Nine. Like that, the official name, the first trailer. Like I think, I think you know they could definitely advertise it in a way and like brand it in a way to get Star Wars fans back. But until they show that uh, in the game has it for me. Yeah. 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 Regardless, yeah. Disney's going to make over $3 billion off these movies. So like, I mean, whatever. That's the thing. Like, we're arguing which Disney movie is going to be the best, biggest movie of the year. Disney's like, who cares? <laughs> Rich anyway. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, I mean, yeah, but I yeah, I think I think Endgame's gonna have it just because you have to know what's going on. Marvel movies are at an all time high and just mm-hmm. like there's nothing on the horizon yeah. that's you know, like it's it's basically the Empire State Building and, you know, basically in the middle of, you know, like boom, basically. <laughs> basically. <laughs> you know, like not not saying that there's you know, not saying discounting, you know, other stuff, but it's like no. <laughs> you're not touching that yeah 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 and like it could ease like i i could hear people's arguments for you know there being too much saturation of star wars over the past couple of years like you know last shit i ruined star wars solo ruined star wars and there's there's as much if not even more saturation of marvel movies but no one's gonna yeah. argue and man the wasp ruined marvel movies like no, yeah. it's maybe it's arguably one of the worst Marvel movies, but like, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't even that bad. I mean, wasn't that bad. Well, <laughs> like, I, I think people are forgetting how bad Marvel some Marvel movies have been. Yeah, <laughs> we've come a long way from what Thor two, uh, Incredible Hulk. Uh, I mean, most of the twos, honestly. Outside of Captain America, which I think Captain America yeah. two was like. Yeah, the okay. the Winter jumping off point of just amazing movie after the top that. Shelf, but I mean, like even Guardians two for some reason people arbitrarily dislike. I really like it. I don't dislike it. I mean, it's fine. Like it's like it's in I the think middle. It's good. Like, yeah, like it's not like you know it's like you know like maybe like around ten ish for me. But like, I mean, yeah, like, it's fine. I was like, what? What are we at? Like twenty now? We're at twenty now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, yeah. So it's like right in the middle for me. Like that's fine, mm-hmm. but. You know, it's, but yeah, I mean, I think, the, I think I do hear like the whole, like, I think Star Wars does like movie wise, I think it helps Star Wars with like a little bit of a break, not necessarily like a whole decade or by any means more, but like maybe we went like maybe like five years max without like an actual like Star Wars yeah. movie like that. I think that would help just mm-hmm. because, you know, when Star Wars comes back, everyone's going to get hyped for it. Yeah. And I maybe even just this year and a half break after Solo might kind of be that, maybe. But mm-hmm. We'll see. Again, yeah. I just, I just want to know that we're going to name this thing. Like, yeah. I mean, how, how, like, how far out do you think before we get a name? Um, When's D23? Like, late July? I believe so. It's either June or July. It's yeah, it's definitely in the summer. Um, D twenty. Oh, okay. We're not okay. Come on, computer. You got this. <laughs> so I'm not mistaken. I think the Last Jedi wasn't actually named until like maybe mid twenty seventeen. It was pretty late in the game. Oh, uh, ooh. Looks like it's gonna be late this year, August twenty third to twenty fifth, according okay, to this. Okay, we'll, we'll get it before then. Maybe Comic Con. Yeah. Well, that mm-hmm. early, early June. July, whatever. We'll get it before. I think we'll get it before July. Yeah, July. Second. Yeah, July like eighteenth to twenty first is Comic Con. Yeah. Or actually, I could easily see them do a thing where like they release the first trailer for Episode Nine like around the time Endgame comes out, so they could show trailers mm-hmm. of that before Endgame. Yeah. Well, honestly, I don't even think you would want to because like. If I, like, I don't know, I don't know, this is just me personally, like, I'm not by no means an advertisement guru, but I feel like you would just ride as much hype for the movie you are, because you're the same company, I mean, mm. well, Disney at least, so, like, yeah. I would just ride all the hype for Avengers coming off of Captain Marvel, 
casually blow over Shazam with <laughs> end game hype and then just ride that into the summer. Use your, you know, Pixar movie slash Frozen. And then, like, after that, all Star Wars. Yeah. Just hype it up and just get everybody pumped. Mm-hmm. Well, like, generally, before Disney movies, they generally mainly show other Disney movies for the trailers. Yeah. Like we're going to probably get a, get a Toy Story 4 trailer before then, maybe a Frozen 2 trailer before then. So yeah. they'll have other stuff to show. You're right. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Spider Man Far From Home, that trailer is going to show before that, probably. Mm-hmm. True. Probably gonna have that. For, yeah, they're probably gonna have that before most of the Marvel movies coming out. But no, it's gonna it's be gonna a be great year, yeah. Oh man! And like oh. last year, what we thought last year was a big deal, but man, yeah. this year is even bigger. Like <laughs> who? Who would have thought? You know, like after all everything last year, we were like, man, if anywhere, there's gonna be nothing bigger than that. And this year, we're like, bro. <laughs> I mean, if Kingdom Hearts 3 came out last year, would you be saying the same thing? I mean, okay, okay. no, no, okay, yes. <laughs> I'm not that, okay. I'm not that, bi- okay, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still, I, I think movie-wise, movie-wise it's yeah. still, yeah, like, mm-hmm. like gaming-wise, you know, like, I love Spider-Man, but Kingdom Hearts 3, like, yo, yeah. it, it's time. I, I've been waiting for Spider-Man for, like, a year. <laughs> I was waiting for Kingdom Hearts since I was in, like, <laughs> yeah. What like middle school? Gosh, oh, I'm so old. <laughs> you only got two more weeks. <laughs> Just hanging there. Oh, I know. Twenty fifth is literally. 29th. I know. Twenty ninth. Yeah, I don't know why I thought twenty. I was getting ahead of myself, but no, literally two weeks. <sighs> oh man, I don't have, oh, I know what I'm doing that morning. I'm going that morning. <laughs> that morning. I don't have class. Yep, I'm on class till 1230. I'm going that nice. morning. I'm going like, I don't know what time GameStop opens, but I'm going like 7 a.m. <laughs> it's open. It's happening. It's got to go down. It's going to be awkward, though, because I think me and my brother are both getting one. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're just like, all right, you play at home. I'll play here. And then we'll see what you got to do sometimes. I mean, me and my brother right. both got a copies of Smash, so. <laughs> Man, you got to do it. You got to yeah. do it. You know, you can't miss out. Okay. And with that, we will see you all next time.